So we're going to introduce this new segment to y'all. It's a segment that, uh, based on some of our statistics, a lot of people like, which is we're going to introduce to you the Minshew moment. So we know Garner Minshew, quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He was back under center for Jacksonville this past weekend against my Tennessee Titans. We know Jacksonville has just fucking sucked. Jacksonville has fucking sucked ever Stank. since they won that first Jacksonville won the first game against the Colts, started out 1-0. We're like, you know what? This team has potential. This team, you know, they might be able to defy the odds and actually win some games. And ever since then, they lost the next 12. Minshew obviously broke his finger. He missed some games, and he was relegated to the bench where he was replaced by Mike Glennon, of all people, because, you know, Jacksonville can't afford a real backup quarterback. I don't even think my team has a backup quarterback. but What the fuck is Glennon? That's what I'm saying. Nonetheless, when he was on the field – (laughs) <laughs> Minshew was the only, probably the only bright spot uh, in, in Jacksonville's basically season. He had 14 touchdowns and five interceptions on the year before he got injured, and he led them to their sole win. So, with this happening recently, Jacksonville season is obviously it, it, it's been over since week. I don't know. I, I mean, it looks like it was over after week one. After that one win, it's the only one they got. Was this the right decision, considering the fact that we have the season is almost over? They've been out of contention for so long, and we know that they're definitely going to get a top pick, barring the Jets fucking up the tank. They're definitely going to have a top two pick if they continue at this pace. Was this the right decision to play Gardner Minshew and potentially risk ruining that tank? What do you think? Gardner Minshew is by far the most underrated quarterback in the history of professional football. We've never seen a guy do some of the things that he's been able to do. Guys, I'll give you my graphic. Pull it up. There we go. Minshew Mania. In all of his starts, in his two-year career, less than two-year career, mind you, Minshew, 35 touchdowns to 11 interceptions, 5,300 yards, a win-loss record of 7-12 and 12 for a fucking terrible Jacksonville Jaguars team. And, of course, his swagger over 9,000 on some Vegeta shit. Let me tell you guys something. Gardner Minshew the, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is a marriage that's going to break. I'm telling you. This is, this is not going to last long because the way they've treated Obviously. this guy, the way they've treated this guy is actually horrendous. Because you can argue they should pick a quarterback at top two. That's fine. You know, they got some good guys up there. They got Sunshine, like Andrew likes to call him. They got um, the kid from Ohio State, okay? They got good options there. You want to take one of those quarterbacks? Mazel. But if you're going to be the Jaguars, if you're Doug Marone, if you're Doug Marone and your thing is you're trying to save your job because you know at the end of the season you're going to be fired, so you're telling me your last resort to save your job is starting Mike Glennon? Mike fucking Glennon? The fuck is no it? No complaints on my end. No complaints on my end, by the way. My yeah, team, yeah, my no, team I'm sure the Titans, we can get. The Titans, no complaints on my end, by the way. The Titans loved I, it. I thoroughly enjoyed fucking, I thoroughly fucking, enjoyed, fucking, enjoyed that gonna, shit. You're going to start on Mike Glennon over a healthy Gardner Minshew? It's not even. I the could fuck understand. Is a Glennon? I could understand if you were trying exactly. to start the kid Luton, the rookie, just to see what he has, that's understandable. The NFL's been known what Mike Glennon has. When the Bears paid him $25 million a year, everybody knew what he had. It wasn't jack shit, okay? When he didn't pan out there, the dude apparently got a contract in Jacksonville. Still don't know how. I don't know how they paid this man. I don't know why they're paying this man. Mike Glennon, I'm sorry. He's a fucking tree back there. He's a fucking Christmas tree back there. The dude doesn't move around the pocket, which is exactly what you need to do behind that terrible offensive line, which is if you're trying to win games, if you're Doug Marone and save your job, Gardner Minshew is the only choice. If Unless you want to say what Luton's got, unless you've given up on this season fully, which... They probably have given up, but unless you as Doug Marone have given up and you're only going to be looking at what the Jacksonville Jaguars have moving forward and that's the that's the notes that you're getting from da- from uh, up top, then yeah, you start the rookie. That makes sense. This is like when Eli Manning was benched for Geno Smith. This is no this, sense. It made no sense because you had the – I forgot what the kid's name was, but you had a rookie. Davis Webb was his name. You had Davis yes. Webb back in the day, right? Davis Webb on the bench. And he, if you're going to – here's the thing. The season's lost. I get it. 
But if you're going to bench Eli Manning, if you're going to bench your starter, who's probably the best player on your team at that point, arguably one of the best. He players. had a streak. He had he had a uh, he had a streak. Yeah, one right, of the but, longest but, streaks but, in NFL history but ended mine, because but, but, of that. But, right, right. He did. But even forget the streak. Arguably the best player on that Jacksonville Jaguars team is Gardner Minshew. I think we can both say we can all say that, right? Well, yeah, they traded everybody else. They traded everybody else away. <laughs> so you got the best player on your team available to play. It's the NFL, okay? And you're not allegedly, you're not deliberately tanking. He's back from injury. What do you do? You put him in. Unless you're gonna see what the rookies got. That's the only real justification for not starting him. The rookie's not there. I, I'd argue different. Oh really? I what argue would you argue? don't put him in. Why? Why would you put somebody in and waste and waste him potentially getting injured over some dumb shit because you want to win a football game in which you're not going to the playoffs anyway? Dude, what's exactly. the point of this, that? I mean, the, dude, I second, the season's I lost. They're gonna pick a, they're gonna pick a quarterback anyway. They're gonna pick a quarterback anyway. Minshew in Jacksonville is done. They're gonna get that kid from Ohio State, or, or they're gonna. How do you get... know it's done? How do you know it's done? They're one and twelve. They've lost twelve straight. This is a terrible football team. This is, is bad. top to bottom. This is a bad okay, football team. You're not going to go ahead and risk a guy's career over a football game. Oh, are you serious? This is professional football. Teams have done more. Like teams have done more over less. Are you kidding me, dude? We live in 2020 now. People are sensitive. You got to remember that. That's not even the case, dude. That's not even the case. Sensitive it's just times. Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew. His entire career in Jacksonville, these past two years, has just been snubbed from any conversation of being one of the best young quarterbacks. And I, I, I was getting in a back and forth on Twitter with this dude who was saying, oh, Gardner Minshew isn't the real deal. The dude, he's got the arm strength of Chad Pennington. Guys, last time I checked, Chad Pennington, fucking good quarterback. Chad Pennington, fucking Chad playoff Pennington, caliber quarterback. Last time Chad I checked, Pennington was not exactly uh, Achilles Smith. Chad yeah, Pennington yeah. was. Yeah, Chad uh, Pennington <laughs> was. You could argue the dude couldn't stay healthy, but Chad Pennington, you could, that dude was a like good quarterback. And they were saying, oh, he has he relies on movement. This is what the guys. This is what this guy was saying. He's like, well, Gardner Minshew relies on his mo mobility to move the pocket to actually be able to extend plays. I'm like, dude, what does Lamar isn't Jackson that, do? Isn't that isn't that isn't what that not just won? Isn't, isn't that what not just won the fucking Eagles this past weekend? Jalen Hurts' ability to right. be mobile and move. Right. Is that dude. not just what won the Eagles a, a prime time game the other day? Dude, bootlegs are. All of Baker Mayfield's game, the dude doesn't do anything other than play action bootlegs. Like, dude, and especially behind that terrible offensive line in Jacksonville, what you you need to extend the plays because you're not getting the time you need to actually like go, make reads. So of course you should actually commend him for his mobility. The dude is able to actually move around the pocket and extend plays and complete passes. He's a 63 uh, percent passing completion percentage. The dude has. 30, That's damn good, considering got, the fact that offensive line is fucking handicapped. I'm that is, hip. That, that, that is I'm good. hip, dude. Like, put up the graphic again. 35 touchdowns to 11 interceptions in 19 with no career offensive starts. Line, that is... With no offensive line. You can say it's garbage time. Dude, it's Jacksonville. They don't got any other time there. He's showing you what he can do. He's showing you he can make complete passes. He's showing you he doesn't turn the ball over. At you can say at best he's Alex Smith. Even then, he's still a top fifteen quarterback, and he's still someone that can win. That's why I said Chicago. All right, so where do you Go where would him. you say you put him? Where in, do you put him? In, right now, if I, you were if you were to leave Jacksonville, where is he going? Chicago. Where would you put him? I said this last week. He's going to Chicago because that's the team. That's a team that might not be able to trade up to get one of those top ten or top two quarterbacks. And if they don't like someone like Trey Lance, or if they don't like the kid from BYU, then an option would be, if you want to save money because Minchu's still on his rookie deal, the dude completes his passes, the dude is accurate, they got a solid running game down there, he doesn't turn the ball over, which has always been the big knock with people like Mitch Trubisky. Doesn't turn the ball over, extends plays behind that terrible offensive line. And if you want to have a starting quarterback to go forward even next year, if you're the Bears... I would draft offensive line in the first round. Take a chance on Gardner Minshew for a year because the team's not going anywhere anyway. You're going to fire Nagy. It's going to be a rebuild, essentially. But if you want to make it less of a rebuild and have a chance at the playoffs next year and not waste Khalil Mack and that defense, which is a stud. Which is those so are studs. fucked because that defense is so good, man. Studs. Eddie Jackson, they, that defense is so fucking those talented. Are, like, if they had a competent quarterback, if they had Gardner Minshew, Andrew, right now, tell me, if Gardner Minshew was a starting quarterback the Chicago Bears, what would that team's record be? 
You know what? I think they would be – I'm not going to lie to you. I think because – they were in contention for a little bit, but they might have been the worst because they started out what like four and one, five, five and, one, and one. But people were like, "That is the people have said that was the worst five and one team in the history of yep. the NFL." I'm not gonna lie to you with with a competent quarterback because Mitch Trubisky literally has not been. He has shown flashes, but Mitch Trubisky has not been the dude that they thought he was gonna be out of North Carolina. Nick Foles, I, I, I don't know. I don't. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I think I with. Foles. That's uh, he's he's long pole foals, big dick Nick. But the point is, is that I think with somebody like Garner Minshew, I I think they would be. Now they're not beating Green Bay. They're not beating Green Bay, but they would oh, maybe on, I would tack on, on maybe on, two, on, on, two, on, on, two more wins, two to three more wins on their on their record. Would you take that? Two to three more wins is two to three more losses off their record, which I five. think would be double digits. Eight and five. Eight and five, yeah, which would put them in in position to finish eleven and five or ten and six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and dude, I'm telling you, that team, they like they're one of those teams. All they need is a competent quarterback. They're like the 49ers uh, back in the day. They're like, or like back when Alex Smith was there and Jim Harbaugh. They're like the Ravens back in 2000. Like you need to need competence. You need someone who can complete passes, not turn the ball over, and keep drives going. That's it. That's all you need to win that team. And so. it really is a shame because Jacksonville, Jacksonville. I mean, I, I, at any team not named Tennessee in the end of a, the AFC South, I, I have to root against. I have to, I root for individual players like Jonathan Taylor. I love Jonathan Taylor. I am so glad that Indy is finally, you know, utilizing that man correctly. But I hope Indy loses out just because. Oh, I hope I Indy to. loses out too. That'd be great for the Ravens. I hope Indy. I hope Indy loses out. Because we have the tiebreaker against them, so you don't want you don't want them to get to a tiebreaker with us. Because I think they would beat the tiebreaker against you guys for a wild card. So because we would win the tiebreaker, we beat the division. Them. We beat them head to head. Okay, so but even then, you want Indy to lose out. The point is, yeah, yeah, is I'm that fine. when it comes to Minshew, it, it's it's inevitable. Like they're gonna move on. And I love Minshew, dude. Like I I I know like you have sold me on Minshew. I have not been the biggest Minshew fan in the past. Partially, it's because of my bias with. AFC South team. Also, he beat but, you guys last year. He beat you guys yeah, last did. year. He did week two. I, I'm I'm still there's an F football. He went out, he pissed. balled out in that game too. Week two, I remember. I remember. Dory dropped the punt and it was downhill from there. But um, the point is, is that they're gonna go out and as much as I love Minshew, ah, Justin Fields. No, no, they're gonna they're gonna get talent. field. He's a generational talent. He's I'm a not generational saying, talent. I'm not dude. saying Minshew's and better, and you need to. I know, I know. Bears, that's the, but but the problem is, is that I really like Minshew. He's a great kid, and I think he will thrive in a better, more competent organization. And given the circumstances, Jacksonville is not going to pass up on. I don't think Jacksonville like. I don't think they're going to be in position to pass up on All on right. a Justin question, Fields. Like question. he is a generational question, talent. Too. Question. Question. How, what do you think about this? Because Minshew does not re- really have a good s- supporting cast around him, right? That's the whole thing in Jacksonville. Like, the receiver, you got DJ Chark. Jacksonville doesn't have shit. Right. We could throw Omer out there. You could throw me out there. I could catch some passes. Right, exactly. Jacksonville, because right? they traded everything, dude. Calias Campbell's but, but, gone. Look at AJ Bouye's gone. Jalen's gone. They're all gone. <laughs> right. But think about it like this. So, he's made something out of nothing, right? He's made people like DJ Chark. He's made people like Chinol. He's uh, what's that? The kid Robinson, the running back. You know, he's is DD th- Westbrook still there? I think DD Westbrook is still there right. too. So he's got all these guys that he's basically he, he's he's godfathered them basically. He's like he's made them. But what do you guys think about him possibly going to a place that doesn't have a good supporting cast around him, but a great organizational structure? And you know where I'm going with this, Andrew. What do you think about Minshew to the Patriots? I think, I think he would thrive. I think he would do, but it's fucked because he is, he's not the talent that Cam Newton is, but then again, they're different players. Minshew is a playmaker. Cam is not a playmaker. Cam never really was a playmaker. He's Cam an was a, He's an athlete, right, right? Right. Minshew is a playmaker. And I think, you know, I think he would, dude, Nikhil Harry, as much as people want to, Give, give Nikhil Harry about how I'm not living up to the hype of being a first-round pick. 
Nikhil yeah. Harry is better than every single fucker he's throwing to down in Jacksonville. That is, Nikhil yeah. Harry is better than everything he is throwing to down in Jacksonville. I'm telling you. And like, if anyone that can offensive mi- line and that offensive line in New England, he, night and day, night and, night day. and, day, night and day, better I'm telling than you, what Minshew if had. Minshew, if Minshew goes to the Patriots, dude. That that could be the start of something special because he's exactly the type of quarter. He's I don't I'm not saying he's Tom Brady in the fact that his talent level or anything, but he's kind no. of got that New England Patriots offensive up. He could work that offense, and I think he could work it successfully. Because what's the New England Patriots offense? Slow, methodical drives, accurate passes, short passes, and running the football. He's perfect for a system like that. And the Patriots next year, they're getting, like, I think eight of their players back because eight of their players on defense opted out for COVID. So right. you get all of those guys back, and that defense comes back. Bill Belichick. The defense he's... is still going to be good, dude. They they, they retain Stephon right. Gilmore. They refuse yeah. to trade and Stephon Gilmore. Bill Belichick Gilmore. does not have that many off seasons. I'm telling you, people who think New England's Dude, down they're in for playoff the count, contention. Don't, people, yeah. They're still in playoff contention. Like, don't people count them forget out. that. Don't, don't count them out next year. I'm telling you. Hey guys, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Um, for more content, please like, hit that notification bell, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and everything like that. And just remember, keep it real.